Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Good morning, dear students. In this lecture, we will be studying civil disobedience movement. Background. First of all, we will be looking at the background behind the civil disobedience movement. In one of the previous lectures, you might have been studied non-cooperation movement, non-cooperation movement. You know that this movement was a failure, it was suspended in 1922 because of Chauri Chaura incident. Chauri Chaura incident of 5 February 1922, Mahatma Gandhi suspended non cooperation movement. In 1930, Mahatma Gandhi started a similar type of movement. The immediate reason behind the start of civil disobedience movement was the unchanging attitude of the British government and the change changes introduced in the form of struggle against the British. In 1930, Mahatma Gandhi decided to start a movement on the lines of non-cooperation movement. What changes did take place after the suspension of the non cooperation movement it demoralized congress man one of the reasons which provided background for the starting of civil disobedience movement by mahatma gandhi was demoralization of congressmen because of the suspension of the non cooperation movement in 1922 no doubt it demoralized the congressmen and the all india membership how did it demoralize the congressmen it could easily be gathered from the number of membership all india membership went down from 1 lakh 6000 in 1923 March, it was reduced to 56000 in May 1929. One of the reasons behind the starting of the civil disobedience movement is that non cooperation movement demoralized the congressmen, it could easily be gagged from the number of membership, the number of congress members in March 1923 was 1 lakh 6 thousand, the number got reduced to 56 thousand in May 1929. So, Rajis, so Rajis, as you know the Swaraj party was formed in 1922 30, 31st may sorry 31st december 31st december 1922 with the cr das as the president and motilal nehru as the secretary swarajist party was formed on 31st december 1922 but by 1926 
27 they got scattered and with the announcement of the Simon Commission they merged with the Indian National Congress. However, they kept a law from the political developments in the country. Thirdly, lack of Hindu Muslim unity. The Hindu Muslim unity of the non cooperation days lost by the mid 1920s witnessed communal rights between the Hindus and Muslims. Between July, April 1926, 138 persons died in Calcutta alone due to communal rights. By the mid 1920s, communal rights broke out between April July 1926, 138 persons died in Calcutta alone due to communal rights. Hindu Magasafa During this time, Hindu Magasafa emerged as the major opponent of the All India Muslim League. During the Nehru report, All India Muslim League's demand of separate electorate for the Muslims was opposed by Hindu Magasafa. The Hindu Muslim unity of the non cooperation movement never regained. It was the third background behind the starting of the civil disobedience movement. Fourthly, new signs of anti-imperialist struggles. What were the new signs of anti imperialist struggles emerged during this period? 1. Militant communist leaders, militant communist leaders, the militant communist leaders began to provide leadership in workers' movement in Bombay and Calcutta. In Bombay and Calcutta, the communist leaders began to provide leadership to the workers movement in Bombay and Calcutta. This workers movement was directed not only against the British, but also Indian capitalists, Indian capitalists and Indian businessmen. The emergence of militant communist leaders who provided workers movement in Calcutta and Bombay, their movement was directed not only against the British officials, but also against the Indian businessman and Indian capitalist. Secondly, revolutionary group. revolutionary group once again became popular with the leftist ideology in Bengal and North India. Hindustan Socialist Republic Association HSRI under the leadership of Fakat Singh. Revolutionary group emerged in Bengal and North India. In North India under the leadership of Fagat Singh, Hindustan Socialist Republic Association was formed. 
then thirdly percent movement percent movements percent movements began to organize during this time Bardoli Satyagraha Bardoli Satyagraha which was formed under the leadership of Sardar Vallafai Patel it ended in success in Gujarat in 1928 in Gujarat Sardar Vallabhai Patel organized Bardoli Satyagraha and it ended in success. Another form of new struggle was Congress Socialist Party. Congress Socialist Party under the leadership of Jabaharla Nagaru and Subhash Chandra Bose. Subhash Chandra Bose. They were the congressmen with lenience towards socialist ideas. They came in known as Congress socialist. Even though they belong to the Congress party, they tilted towards socialist ideology. This man came into known as Congress socialist. They demanded Purna Suraj. The Congress socialist demanded Purna Suraj instead of dominion status. Complete independence, these Congress socialists demanded Purna Swaraj instead of dominion status. In this background, Mahatma Gandhi accepted the change in the Congress at the Lahore session, at the Lahore session of the Indian National Congress held in 1929. Setting the stage for the another round of struggle against the British. First of all, <coughs> Nehru report. Nehru report was submitted to Viceroy and is implementation not later than 31st December 1929. Mahatma Gandhi asked Viceroy to implement Nehru report not later than 31st December 1929. But Viceroy did not accept this demand put forward by Mahatma Gandhi to implement Nehru report before 31st December 1929. So, Mahatma Gandhi started decided to start civil disobedience movement. It had three phases. The civil disobedience movement started by Mahatma Gandhi had three phases. The first phase of the civil disobedience movement was from January 1930 to March 1931. First phase. First phase of the non cooperation movement was from January 30, 1932, sorry, January 1930 to 1931. Second phase. This was 31 March. March 
thirty one stu December nineteen thirty one. Third phase. January nineteen thirty two to April nineteen thirty four. Civil disobedience movement had three different phases. The first phase of the civil disobedience movement was from January nineteen thirty to March nineteen thirty one. The second phase of the civil disobedience movement was from March nineteen thirty one to December. 1931 the third and last phase of the civil disobedience movement was from january 1932 to april 1934 first of all we will be studying the first phase the first phase from january 1932 march 1931 The first phase of the non-cooperation movement was from January 1932, March 1931. The first phase of the non-cooperation movement was started with a demand to the British government by the Viceroy. If the if these demands were acceptable to the British government, there would not be any. Civil disobedience movement. If these demands were not met by Viceroy, civil disobedience movement would start by Gandhi. First of all, we will be looking what were the demands put forward by Mahatma Gandhi to the Viceroy. An eleven point, an eleven point ultimatum. and 11 point demands were put to forward by mahatma gandhi before the viceroy for acceptance what were the demands reduction of rupee sterling ratio rupee sterling Ratio. Second, reduction of land revenue. Reduction of land revenue by half. The third demand was salt tax should be abolished. Salt tax should be abolished. Fourth, to end government monopoly. On salt manufacture. Five. Salaries of higher grade officers. Higher grade officers should be reduced. Should be reduced by half. What was the sixth demand? Military expenditure should be reduced. Military expenditure should be reduced by half. protection of indian textiles and coastal shipping eight all political prisoners are political prisoners 
should be discharged or released these were the major demands put forward by mahatma gandhi before the viceroy viceroy did not accept these demands and now mahatma gandhi decided to start civil disobedience movement he st started civil disobedience movement with his historic dandi march dandi march from toll march 1930 mahatma gandhi started civil disobedience movement with his historic dandi march on toll march 19 30 from samarbadi ashram he went to dendi beach with 78 followers and once they reached dendi beach they used to manufacture salt violating salt laws civil disobedience movement was started with his historic dindi march on 12 march 1930 he started his journey from samarbadi ashram with 78 followers and reached dindi beach where they violated salt laws and they manufactured salt here you can see a difference between non cooperation movement and civil disobedience movement in non cooperation movement they used to non cooperate with the british government and boycotted british goods educational institutions and law courts in the civil disobedience movement the main attention was paid breaking of british laws the program of the movement the program of the civil disobedience movement here in after cdm program of the civil disobedience movement one violation of salt laws violation of salt laws everywhere second students should leave students should leave colleges third program government servants government servants should resign from service should resign from service fourth one foreign cloth should be burned foreign cloths should be burned five no taxes it be paid no taxes it be paid to the government six women should picket liquor shops these were the programs initially adopted during the first phase of the civil disobedience movement during the course of the civil disobedience movement during the during the first phase of the civil disobedience movement two events alarmed british government one chittagong armory raid chittagong armory 
right chittagong armory raid was raided under the leadership of surya sen on 22nd april 1930 even though surya sen was not arrested by the british till 1933 and he remained underground till 1933 the british government was not able to arrest surya sen till 1933 he provided leadership to chittagong armory the second development which alarmed the british government during the first phase of the civil disobedience movement was that massive upsurge started in peshawar peshawar on 23 april on the next day of chittagong armory raid 1930 the massive upsurge was started against the arrest of khan abdul kafur khan khan abdul kafur khan khan abdul kafur khan was arrested by the british police at peshawar against this massive protest movement broke out in peshawar he uh, you know khan abdul kafur khan came in known as frontier gandhi frontier gandhi khan abdul kafur khan popularly came in known as frontier gandhi the british had sent hindu soldiers it is a protest movement but the hindu soldiers declined to open fire on their muslim protesters it demonstrated the patriotic feeling and the communal unity communal unity and patriotic feeling the hindu soldiers in the hindu soldiers declined to open fire on the muslim protesters now we are going to analyze responses responses of the different strata towards civil disobedience movement as it was not in the case of the non cooperation movement the urban middle class intelligentsia urban middle class intelligentsia the urban middle class intelligentsia did not have much enthusiasm to take participation in the civil disobedience movement there was no much enthusiasm among the urban middle class intelligentsia towards the civil disobedience movement their response was lukewarm there were only a few instances of giving up legal practice secondly what about the militant urban educated class the militant urban educated class was more attracted to the revolutionary terrorism they were more attracted to revolutionary terrorism rather than to civil disobedience movement revolutionary 
terrorism operated underground became popular in Bengal and North India. This militant urban educated class was more attracted towards these revolutionary activities. What about the Muslim community? Low presentation, low participation as not in the case of the non cooperation movement, wherein Muslims were actively participated for restoring the lost glory and prestige of Khalifa, the ruler of Turkey. But in the civil disobedience movement, the Muslim participation was very low. 9 out of 679 prisoners in Allahabad between 1930 and 33. In Allahabad, the Muslim prisoners was only 9. Out of 679 in Allahabad between 1930 and 1933. Muslims participation in civil disobedience movement was very low compared to non cooperation movement. There were only 9 Muslim prisoners out of 679 in Allahabad during the period between 1930 1933. What about the peasants? Peasants were considerably mobilized in the initial months of the initial months of civil disobedience movement. They were largely mobilized, but once the Britishers began to confiscate the territories, uh, sorry, the lands agricultural implements of the peasants, they slowly withdraw from the civil disobedience movement. The number of arrests was high compared to non cooperation movement, because it involved violation of laws, 92,214 were the prisoners, 92,214 were arrested by the British police during the civil disobedience movement, the number was three times higher than the days of the non cooperation movement, because it involved violation of laws, the number of arrests increased. In what way did capitalists respond to civil disobedience movement? What was the response of the capitalist Ahmedabad mill owners Bombay merchants Bombay merchants Marwaris in Calcutta, Marwaris in Calcutta, under the leadership of G. D. Birla, under G. D. Birla expressed a solidarity with the civil disobedience movement. 
coming to capitalist ahmedabad millionaires bombay merchants marwaris led by gd birla expressed a solidarity with the civil disobedience movement merchants what was the response of the merchant community they took collective pledge in most of the places they took collective pledge to give up import of foreign goods for some months with the combined effect of picketing as well as deep great depression great depression broke out in united states of america in 1929 because of the combined effects of great depression of 1929 and the picketing on the part of the civil disobedience movement the import of british cloth to india declined in 1929 it was 1248 million yards million yards the import of british cloth was 1248 million yards in 1929 1930 it was reduced to 523 million yards in 1930 31 so the import of british cloth declined in 1929 1930 it was 1248 million yards it was declined to 523 million yards in 1930 31 then how did women respond to the civil disobedience movement widespread participation women widely participated in civil disobedience movement they were mainly engaged in picketing shops selling foreign goods and liquor as well as the manufacturing of salt violating salt laws nine in bengal women not only participated in the civil disobedience movement but also in revolutionary and terror activities in bengal women took participation in revolutionary and terror activities these were the responses of the different strata of people towards the civil disobedience movement now we are going to analyze the second phase second phase second phase was from march 1931 to december 1931 this was the second phase of the civil disobedience movement due to the frequent hartals dislocated dislocation of trade and industry the condition of peasant was also miserable because of the seizure of property and increased poverty frequent 
Hartans resulted dislocation of trade and industry. The condition of peasants became miserable because of the occupation of their lands, cattle and agricultural implements by the British. During this time, most of the congressmen behind the bars, congressmen behind bars. During this time, most of the congressmen were arrested by the British police. Now, you may recall the round table conference, first round table conference. In the first round table conference, Indian National Congress did not attend. So, no final decision could not be taken without the consultation of the Indian National Congress, which represented the majority of the Indians. So, the attention of the British Prime Minister Ramsay MacDonald and Viceroy Lord Irwin was it to bring Indian National Congress in the another round table conference. In order to bring Indian National Congress to the next round of round table conference, an act agreement was entered into between Mahatma Gandhi and Lord Irwin. This agreement properly known as Gandhi Irwin Pact. Gandhi Irwin Pact, which was signed on 5 March 1931. Under the pact signed between Mahatma Gandhi and Viceroy Lord Irwin, Mahatma Gandhi suspended civil disobedience movement. Gandhi agreed to attend Gandhi agreed to attend second round table conference boycott of British goods suspended. Four political prisoners with no allegation of violence political prisoners were released political prisoners with no allegation of violence were released by the british government ordinances were withdrawn of ordinances promulgated during the period of the civil disobedience movement. Remission of fines collected by the British government which got refunded. return of lands to persons confiscated by the British, lands confiscated from the persons got returned. But salt law was not revoked, salt law was not revoked, but people residing within a certain limit from the sea was allowed it to manufacture salt leniency towards government servants who resigned during the civil disobedience movement. These were the terms included in the Gandhi Irwin Pact. Under the Gandhi Irwin Pact, Mahatma Gandhi represented 
Indian National Congress at the second round table conference as the sole representative of the Indian National Congress. Second round table conference. Mahatma Gandhi attended the second round table conference as the sole representative of the Indian National Congress. In this second round table conference, Mahatma Gandhi tabled the same proposal as Nehru report. Nehru report was tabled by Mahatma Gandhi, but it was opposed by the Muslims. They demanded separate electorates. Nehru report provided reservation for Muslims only in provinces where they were minority. But Muslims demanded separate electorates including the central one third reservation for Muslims in central legislature. Ambedkar demanded separate electorate for depressed classes. These were not acceptable to Mahatma Gandhi. He opposed the provision of separate electorate for the Muslims as well as the depressed classes. Because of the opposition, no final settlement was made at the second round table conference. These were the major developments during the period of the second phase of the civil disobedience movement. During the second phase of the civil disobedience movement in practice, actually there was no civil disobedience movement. Mahatma Gandhi kept civil disobedience movement in a suspended animation. Now the third phase, Gandhi returned to Bombay on 28th December 1931 from Britain. From England, Mahatma Gandhi landed Bombay on 28th December 1931. And once he reached India, he decided to restart the civil disobedience movement. Restarting of civil disobedience movement. The third phase was from January 1932 to April 1934. Gandhi returned from Britain to India without any final agreement on the constitutional provisions at the second round table conference. Once he returned to India, he restarted civil disobedience movement which he got which he had got suspended during the second phase. But Gandhi was arrested on 4th January 1932. Not only Gandhi prominent congressmen behind the civil disobedience movement were arrested by the British government and started ruthless oppression ruthless suppression of civil disobedience movement in the third phase. We can see ruthless suppression of the civil disobedience in the third phase. It was called civil martial law. As you have been taught earlier, within a week all leading congressmen were arrested by the British police. Arrest of congressmen, the British government suppressed the civil disobedience movement by arresting congressmen. Congress organization was declared Congress organization was declared illegal 
by the British government. All Gandhi ashrams were occupied. All Gandhi ashrams were occupied by the British police. Processions were lati charged. Rigorous imprisonment rigorous imprisonment was awarded to those who indulged in violence. Heavy fines were imposed. Lands of peasants, cattle, agricultural implements, were confiscated. Lands, cattle and agricultural implements of the peasants were confiscated by the British. Their houses occupied by British. Occupied by British. These were the repressive measures adopted by the British government for the effective suppression of the civil disobedience movement. Because of these repressive measures adopted by British government for the successful suppression of the civil disobedience movement, Gandhi did not have any alternative rather than suspending civil disobedience movement. The government mobilized entire governmental machinery for the effective suppression of the civil disobedience movement. It was because of the repressive policies adopted by the British government for the suppression of the civil disobedience movement, Mahatma Gandhi temporarily suspended civil disobedience movement in May 1933. And it was finally ended in April 1934. This was the third phase of the civil disobedience movement. During the third phase of the civil disobedience movement, all the congressmen were arrested by the British and they took effective measures for the suppression of the civil disobedience movement. Pursuant to this, Mahatma Gandhi suspended civil disobedience movement in May 1933 and he completely withdrew it in April 1934. After which Mahatma Gandhi took up hydrogen welfare, welfare measures. Now, the students will be able to know the circumstances behind the starting of civil disobedience movement by Mahatma Gandhi, the major developments during the three phases, the responses of the different strata of Indian people towards the civil disobedience movement, the terms ended into between Mahatma Gandhi and Viceroy Irwin. And finally, the repressive measures taken by the government for the suppression of the civil disobedience movement. Now, the major questions from this topic. Who was known as 
from dear Gandhi. Question number two. Who did organize Chittagong Armory Raid? Who did organize Chittagong Armory Raid? Question number three. What were the demands put forward by Gandhi to Viceroy before starting the civil disobedience movement? Question number 4. What were the responses of different strata of Indian society towards civil disobedience movement? What were the terms Gandhi Irwin Pact these are the questions I strongly feel that the students are able to answer to all these questions. Thank you dear students for attending this class.